Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the subnet mask. Exactly what is it and, and why do we need it? Going forward, every time you talk about an IP address, you're, all, you're also going to talk about its subnet mask. So this is a very, very important topic. It's going to come up whenever you have to subnet uh, networks into smaller networks. Um, it comes up on the job all the time, uh, in configuration and in design, and it also comes up on the certification exams. So it's a very important topic, and you really need to understand it. So with that said, let's jump into it. There's a lot of material to cover. So, so far, when we've talked about IP addresses, we've made it a point to distinguish which portion of the IP address is the network portion and which portion is the host portion. Well, unless we tell a router or a computer this same information, they have no way of knowing. They have no way of knowing our intentions and how we want to structure that IP address. So a tool is needed in order to let them figure it out on their own. And that tool is the subnet mask. And that's what we're going to focus on. So here are the basics on the subnet mask. It's 32 bits long. Now, an IP address is 32 bits uh, long as well. However, keep in mind, a subnet mask is different. It's a different number. It's a separate number than the IP address itself. However, it accompanies the IP address. So they're, they're, they come in a pair, and you'll have these two numbers. Now, the subnet mask can be expressed just like an IP address in terms of using dotted decimal notation or using binary notation. You can use either one. Well, if the job of the subnet mask is to tell a router which portion of the IP address is the network portion and which portion is the host portion, well, how does it do that? Well, it's pretty simple, actually. The subnet mask will use a one to represent the network portion, and it'll use a zero to represent the host portion. And it's as simple as that. So you can see here why understanding binary is pretty important and in order to not only grasp IP addresses, but also to grasp the subnet mask. Okay, so let's now actually go ahead and take a look at how this is done, some actual subnet masks, and we'll see how the network portion of ones and the host portion of zeros is actually used. And probably the best place to start is by looking at the classful networks. Do you remember those, the class A, the class B, and the class C? Well, we mentioned that each class has a dedicated portion of the IP address for the network. And the class A has the first octet, class B has the first and second octet, and class C has octets 1, 2, and 3, all dedicated to the network portion. Now, even though uh, by default um, these values do not change, they still need a subnet mask. So we're not actually, you don't have to subnet in order to use a subnet mask. I know the name is thrown around a lot, the word subnet, it could be a little bit confusing. But just keep this in mind, whenever you look at any IP network number or any IP address, a router or a computer always needs a subnet mask in order to differentiate the structure of it, the network versus the host portion. So the classes have what are sometimes referred to as the default subnet masks because they're always going to be the same, just like the designation of the first, first and second, or first, second, and third octets to the network portion never changes for each class. Okay, that'll be a little bit clearer as we go through each one. Let's start with the class A. Well, here we have an IP network ID of 10.0.0.0. The first octet is dedicated to the network portion, the entire octet. So if you look at the subnet mask in binary, you can see that every bit position in the first octet is a 1. And then, of course, since octets 2 through 4 are all dedicated to the host portion, every bit position is designated as a 0. And then we know that we can express this in dotted decimal notation. So on the bottom, we have the decimal subnet mask of 255.0.0.0. That is the default subnet mask for a class A network. All right, let's move on to a class B. And our IP network ID has changed, obviously. We're in a new range, right, the 172.16. Since we know class Bs have the first and second octets dedicated to the network, we can see here the binary subnet mask will look like this. All ones for the first, all ones for the second, 
and then the third and fourth are all zeros. And again, that's because um, the entire octet is dedicated to the network portion for octets one and two, so every bit position has to be a one. And then the opposite is true for octets three and four. The entire, both octets are entirely dedicated to the host portion, so they are all bit positions in each octet are, are designated as zeros. And then we have our dotted decimal notation 255.255.0.0. .255 .0 .0. You can probably guess how a class C network is going to look then. Here our IP network ID 192.168.1.0. We know the first three octets are going to be for the network, so that means the first three octets are all ones, and then we have just one octet of all zeros for the host portion. Likewise, the decimal subnet mask is going to look like this, 255.255.255.0. Now these are, again, the default subnet masks for the class A, B, and C networks. Um, you need to know these, you just need to memorize them. They come up um, on the job a lot in configurations and you'll definitely, definitely be required um, whenever you take uh, certification exams. Uh, so commit these uh, three uh, default subnet masks to memory, okay? So now let's take a look at what a subnet mask might look like when we actually use subnetting and we break some of the classful network boundary rules. Well, when we break the network rules and we steal bits from the host portion to create the subnet portion, well, we have some options. We can, we can steal a few bits. We can steal an entire octet. It depends on our needs. So keep this in mind. You don't always steal an entire octet. In other words, you're not always going to have the nice, clean, and neat, and simple looking subnet masks that we just looked at with the classical networks. You know, it's always going to be 255 or 0 when you're looking at it in decimal, or all 1s or all zeros per octet in binary. Sometimes you only take a portion of the host portion of an IP address in order to create your subnet mask. So let's take a look at this. Here we have a subnet number. Now this is in a class C, and we know that by the 192, but we don't need an entire class C of host IPs in this particular network. So we're going to subnet it, we're going to make it smaller. In this instance, our subnet mask is going to look like this. You can see that last octet, it's not a zero and it's not 255. So it's something in between. Well, what exactly did we do? The answer is best illustrated when we look at the binary of the subnet mask. And here you can see it. So the first three octets are, in fact, uh, all taken up for the network portion, because this is a class C network address to begin with. However, then we started to break the, the network boundary rule, and you can see we took four bits from the host portion, and then we left four bits for the, the hosts themselves. So we stole four bits. Well, how do we get the number 240? Think back to the bit positions, and when we talked about each bit position having a value in decimal, well, if you were to add up uh, these four bit positions and their values, it actually comes out to 240. Okay, and so we're going to get, we're going to get into the how do we create this subnet mask um, in in the the upcoming tutorials. But this is just a, a look ahead to give you an idea that subnets and and subnetting and and the subnet mask in particular, um, it, it it has a wide range of values from the classful subnet masks to subnet masks when you actually use subnetting. Okay. All right, well, to summarize everything we covered, we now know that computers and routers, they need subnet masks in order to help them figure out the structure of the IP address, the host portion and the network portion. Now, particularly when we look at the subnet mask in binary, we now know that the network portion is made up of ones and the host portion is made up of zeros. 
Memorize the default class A, B, and C subnet masks. You need to know them off the top of your head without any delay. That's how fundamental they are to your understanding of IP addressing. Okay, so that's it. That is the introduction to subnet masks. Going further, we're going to get into the working details of how we create these and how we modify them. Okay, so that's it. That's the intro to the subnet mask. Thanks for watching, and again, study IP addressing every day.